Okay, so CJ, before you bring your brother-in-law on here, would you like to introduce him? Yeah, so uh, yeah, as you know, we've been starting this. We've been having some internet issues, clearly, and trying to figure out data and all this stuff that you know goes into producing this show for everybody. And so I talked to, like, just the same way you're like, CJ set this up. CJ's done this. This is the guy that I go to when I'm like, Nathan, I have no idea what I'm doing. What do I do? And, and I constantly am asking him questions and, and, and seeing what he has to say on this subject. So uh, I figured that uh, given that we've all been through in the month, that it would be a great way for us to uh, have a conversation about Internet service providers real quick. We have a video real quick just to preface what it is for everybody. Uh, so for those that don't know, and what throttling is. So if you don't mind, sir, I'll roll tape. Do it. Instead of surfing the internet, does it seem like sometimes you're just crawling the internet? Is it possible that your internet service provider is slowing down? I'm Kristen Malia for Broadband Now, the most comprehensive resource for internet plans, pricing, and coverage. My mom taught me sharing is caring, but when it comes to the internet, sharing sucks. You see, the signal your internet service provider, or ISP, sends to your devices is shared with many other people simultaneously. Sometimes your ISP will limit or throttle your usage to certain speeds to free up bandwidth for other users. It's like going to an all-you-can-eat restaurant, but they replace your silverware with a 200-pound spork. Here's the good news. Odds are you aren't being throttled. Although the practice is frequent on mobile and wireless services, it's not very common with cable, DSL, or fiber. Internet service providers typically only throttle heavy internet users. You may have met your data limit. So during busy times, your signal slows down so people under their limit can still surf quickly. But since they won't even tell you that it's happening, how can you know if you're being throttled? When you think your ISP is slowing down, visit broadbandnow.com slash speed test to measure your internet speeds. Believe it or not, most ISPs can detect speed tests and artificially inflate your speeds to make it appear that they're not throttling you but two can play that game. You need to download and activate a virtual private network or VPN. Among their many advantages, VPNs hide from your ISP that you're running a speed test. So running the test a second time may yield different results. If your speeds are significantly lower from before you activated the VPN, you may be throttled. So to tell if your internet is being throttled, run an internet speed test. Download and activate a reputable virtual private network. You'll find many choices on the internet. Run another speed test to see if you get a different result. If the second test is significantly slower, you could be a throttling victim. You may want to explore other internet service providers, even if you don't know the difference between a VPN and DSL, or an ISP and a BLT. To see all your broadband options, type in your zip code at Broadband Now, which helps millions of consumers each year find and compare local internet service providers. Whoa, that was revelatory, CJ. Uh, like, that, you know, out here, we're just dealing with Verizon and AT&T. We haven't even gotten to that level yet. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. See how that relates to this. But I've experienced this. You know, when I was doing Adam versus the man in LA, we ended up paying $500 uh, a month for some exclusive business service just to have it reliable 24 7 because every other ISP, and it was Time Warner, uh, that it, and it's, this, it's this whole telecom oligopoly bullshit in America that, you know, puts them in a position to screw over customers. As I was watching that video, there, there were two things that jumped out at me. One, the hiding of the throttling. The hiding of the just throttling, the, yeah. Just the dishonesty of that. Like, it's not surprising compared to, you know, all the other crap that, that we get from the major telecoms. But 
that, that you have to like trick them to learn what they're actually giving you. Now I use a VPN anyway. I use Nord VPN. I, I, you know, I can generally, uh, I should, I think they have an affiliate program. Well, we should I got, see if they'll I, pay me. To I got, I got, how about this, sir? Uh, allow me to introduce our guest yeah, and, and he can hear you. Yeah. So again, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, my, my brother-in-law here, Nathan Jones, I will get him on just a second, sir. Hello, Nathan. How's it going? Outstanding. Thank you so much for joining us. How are you? Good. How are yourself? Well, I'm just, I'm a little flabbergasted. You know, I, I, I really, I'm kind of embarrassed. I feel like I shouldn't be shocked at all. Right. Mm. To think, oh yeah, ISPs are doing this. Oh, uh, yeah. and, and so the, the first thing about them, like hiding that they're throttling yeah, they use they use a program that prioritizes um, network. Basically, uh, back in the day when carriers used to give um, plans, you'd sign up for a two-year contract and you get a phone for hundred bucks or whatever. There was not as much uh, apps, and you know, before the iPhone, there was really nothing heavily that would drain their network. Well, nowadays we got everything is going to um, all data nowadays. You know. From gaming yeah. to to uh, video streaming to 1080p right. to I mean yeah. sooner or later we're going to yeah. be 8K, 8k and um, for a 4k stream you need at least 25 megabit connection and, and right. a lot of rural so, areas so, so, don't have that. So correct me if I'm wrong though, in sort of my economic understanding of this is that basically as devices became capable of consuming much more data, the major telecoms taking advantage of their uh, oligopoly status instead of responding to the market demand by investing in improving the networks and delivering better data service nationally instead well, really globally instead they came up with a way to trick us into just going along with the current system and thinking that we're not getting screwed and the end result is the current reality of everybody's really freaking frustrated with their ISP and their phone provider and going, wait, something's wrong here. And yeah. you know, like, I, I'm, I'm just, I've, I've kind of given up on this and just, I, I'm going to, until we get mesh nets, we're going to have to deal with this crap. Is that, is that fair understanding? Well, the, the idea is they're trying to uh, so-called optimize for every other person. Cause like I was saying back in the day, people would, a torrent off of towers and nowadays uh when you have more more um people on the same tower what happens is is it gets congested which is a heavy load so people who've done 200 gigabytes in and within a month are going to be throttled to about 2g speeds which is about 600 kilobits per second that's as right. slow as a 56k that. that's as low as a 56k modem um yeah and the reason being is now they're trying to push everybody to 5G uh, is because of how much data everything is pushing. Uh, you know, game, games are, you know, the newest Call of Duty is... Uh, okay, okay, hold on, hold on. I got, I got to stop you. Okay, so, so 5G, and mm -hmm. I get that and go, wow, they're okay, so this is how they justify or they're ginning up demand is that if people are frustrated enough, mm -hmm. they'll accept any new system. And okay. I, I would assume with 5G... It's, it's really more about the financial manipulation around it, the maintenance of the oligopoly powers of these, uh, of these telecoms. But do you think there's anything more to the 5G conspiracy, health threats, something with the technology itself, or is it just monopoly economic manipulation? Well, what well, a lot of people don't understand about 5G is essentially the same thing as 4G LTE. And uh, there's 4G LTE, there's 4G LTE Advanced, 4G LTE Advanced can get as near as speed as 5G. Technically, I don't think we need 5G. I think we can at least enhance the networks we have today because uh, it can handle it um, if they would actually um, optimize. Increase the capacity of the servers at that speed so that everybody Correct. could get 4G LTE Correct. all the time. But if, the everybody could purchase, if everybody could purchase an unlimited 4G LTE consistent mm. connection, 
you yes. could have a continuous data stream of HD and it would be as much as any individual that, could consume uh, that's a, that's unless another, they were doing some special major data application. That's another thing they're doing too, is if you look on your plans, a lot of time it will say uh, that they won't mm -hmm. only give you video. If, it detect, if the network detects that you're watching video, it will actually throttle you down to 480p. Uh, some plans will say they'll give you 1080p. But so even if you buy a phone, let's say the fancy Galaxy S20, with its you know nice screen, you won't even be able to use the actual resolution for that for that phone. So technically, you'd be streaming on their 4G LTE connection, and you're watching a video at 720p, even though the uh, phone is capable of uh, 1440p or higher. Right. So you're spending you know $1,100 on a phone. Essentially, you can't really op utilize everything unless you have Wi-Fi. Okay, so for me now, to for for me as an independent media producer, who's uploading content, and it's part of my business. And when that slowed down, it hurts. When I can't live stream, you know, it hurts. And there are times when it's like I literally can't connect on live stream. Um, but for the average consumer, you know, this might sound like first world problems. Oh. You have to watch your amazing video from the library of all the videos ever made by humanity at your fingertips. You have to watch it blurry instead well, of crispy on that device that fits in your pocket. Wah, 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 right? Well, but now that now there's legitimacy to that case. I want to get your response, but also to put this in perspective that in in the global scale of internet penetration and speed. We're like a second world country, not quite third world, but like you look at uh, Korea, Japan, um, a dozen, correct me if I'm wrong, but dozens of other countries now have way better internet networks than, actually, than we do in the United States, right? Actually, no. We are actually one of the leading heads in cellular network connections. That's why. Okay, well, okay, for cellular, you know, but what I read now, correct me if I'm wrong, though, because I read mm -hmm. this, maybe it was years ago. But that in at least South Korea, where they yeah. that the, the, the South, ones who are leading are like a scale above us. Right? But South Korea is essentially America, and if you want to get technical, uh, America <laughs> has a lot of money. America has a lot of money in Samsung, which Samsung is underneath Apple. Uh, so in reality, right. um, <laughs> you know, we have a lot of troops over there, so of course they're going to invest in that. But like a lot of third world countries, uh, Europe. For example, Vondafone, okay. um, uh, a lot of their FIDO, a lot of their networks, no, they're still on 3G, trying to get to 4G, okay. trying to get to 5G. So the, reason, the reason I was going that way was I was trying to make you, uh, trying to help you make the point about how legitimate and important this is for the potential of improving quality of life. Because there are things that in countries where they do have consistent data that where more things are possible. Right. Yeah. So what, yeah. what's your response to someone going, how dare you whine? Like, you know, the Louis C.K. bit. Everything's yeah. awesome and everybody's complaining. This Internet on the airplane went down. Oh, this is bullshit. Like, yeah. really, why, why are we why are we bothering to complain about this? Really? Yeah. Well, the reality is we used to have to deal with 56K modems back in the day. I don't know if you remember that. AOL, you know, you got mail. So, you know, we've come a long way. <laughs> yeah, we've come a long way, but even carriers nowadays are still getting in trouble. AT and T was fined uh, quite a bit of money recently, and I actually got a check from this for thirty dollars because back um, in the day I had lines. For yeah, that. there's a big element of fraud, obviously. Yeah. Throughout all uh, they were throttling, and what people don't know is if you go to you, let's say you go to YouTube, the network will understand what apps you're using, especially video. Video is a big one. Netflix was into a big uh, argument with ISPs over uh, their videos. Hulu, same thing. It's only going to get worse because a lot of people are now going with YouTube TV, Hulu TV, instead of actually using like uh, Dish Network or Direct TV. It's, it's streaming television. So that's why there's a need for uh, faster 5G because of the ping. It really comes down to the ping. How fast that response between you clicking that button and it gets right. the device. You can have as much bandwidth as you want, but if that response is, let's say you have a 300 uh, millisecond response, that's why games like Call of Duty or thing you have lag. That it's millisecond, yeah. yeah, it's not doable. 
So that's why they want 5G is because you can do things. <coughs> it's almost like if you were standing there, the ping is almost instantly. So that's where, so, you know, health, emergency equipment, you know. And there was another thing that Verizon uh, will have gotten in trouble for is they uh, got in trouble for um, throttling. I don't know if you remember those fires uh, a few years ago in California. Uh, yep. They got in trouble for throttling. They, Verizon got in trouble for throttling all the fire departments and all the emergency e response or the first responders. And mm. um, they called, they actually called Verizon and Verizon said, well, you need to upgrade to this tier plan. Even though they're like, hey, we're trying to, we're trying to fight these fires. We're trying to, you know, do, they're very dependent on their devices. So you can imagine if we had 5G, how well it would help, help, you know, the infrastructure, you know, medical wise. Yeah. And what's happening now is since T-Mobile and Sprint merged, uh, T-Mobile is actually setting up a first responders called FirstNet, and it's free for all first responders and actually runs off their 5G network, which 5G networks don't have a big load right now. So I don't see them putting tiers on that anytime soon. Because that's the idea is to let people just, you know, fly on there. Yeah, before, before you, this is all really good stuff. We're going to take as long as you need to get to everything you want to say related to this. But I got to, before I forget, I have a few things that I, I want to interject with it that you made me think of here. Um, first, in terms of the control, if they're able to limit bandwidth, what you were saying is they're, they're able to kind of steer video traffic yep. to different sources, to different platforms. Not only is that, a form of economic fraud and manipulation. This is profiteering, is. taking advantage of corporatism, all these things in government. But it's mm -hmm. also a way to control the conversation. It makes censorship worse. It makes censorship effective. Whereas oh, if the yeah. dominant paradigm were to shift to something decentralized because everybody had the bandwidth that we're capable of, they wouldn't be able to, like me being censored on YouTube would be irrelevant essentially. Um, but then two other things that, that, that I think are, are worth pointing out that, that you, you kind of hinted at that are, that are made possible when everybody has uh, the bandwidth that we're capable of delivering today. One is emergency response. Think of what we can do with virtual medical services in emergencies. Mm -hmm. Think of what we can do uh, in, in natural disasters and in, in, in coordinating responses, in controlling drones. What we're going to be able to do in deploying drone technology in emergency response, imagine that for fighting fires. You're going to need bandwidth for that, for all those oh, yeah. things. And the second one is virtual interaction. And there's a, a great, great demand for this in, in the age of coronaphobia. People want to do, yep. say, political conventions virtually, where it's not I'm staring at a screen, worried about my connection. It's I get to stand in a virtual suit and have 3D goggles and have fully immersive experiences at, as if I was at these things in person. I can go and explore other worlds with technology from a safe place, whether it's from a virus, or I want to walk around the rim of a volcano with a heat-proof bot. Now I, it's just all of these amazing things that we have the technology are being held back just because of the stifling of connectivity. Oh yeah, and uh, it's it's also comes to the point where um, even nowadays some carriers, even like car line carriers, are even doing tier lines. Uh, I have a buddy that lives in Pennsylvania, and he gets a terabyte a month on his hard line uh, connection. Especially with rural areas that have a lot of people connected to one hub, they will start doing that too. So throttling mm -hmm. hasn't just come to just wireless carriers it's also on some hardwire carriers too which is yeah. uh, and that sad. keeps people watching the mainstream media yes. that's that's you know this is this is this is probably a bigger dynamic in this is that if you're if you're old media or old telecommunications you don't want this because this new one will put them all out of business and so anything they can do to sabotage or slow down this transition and that means censorship and the maintenance of, of the old mainstream media is, is perpetuated by this problem. Yeah. And it's even come to the point where let's say you hit your data point, you use up all your data and you're being throttled. What the network will do is let's say you made a phone call and I didn't meet my data and I made the phone call. Guess who's going to get first? Me. Because you used all your data. So if you, so it's come to the point where 
like uh, even like nowadays, I don't know if you heard of Google Stu Studio. Have you ever heard of that before? Google Studio. No, please introduce me. Basically, Google Studio is now uh, Google set up their own servers for game gamers, right? And basically, you connect to their servers and you run the game off their server, and you don't need anything. You can do it off your phone. You can do it off the, the computer. You don't need any console. You don't need anything. But guess what? You need bandwidth. You need you need inter a good internet connection to run that Call of Duty from Google Studio. And that's nowadays. That's how a lot of things are going is remote play wireless um so there's essentially a need for 5g and, and another thing people don't realize is your home router is actually worse than your wireless connection uh than wireless outside because your your router at home also does a 2.4 gigahertz there's now some routers that do tri-band like the routers here at my house that i've set up for me and cj are wi-fi 6 i don't know if you know what wi-fi 6 is it's the new standard uh it does 8x it can do two gigabits over a wireless connection at your house, and so um, even even if you have like a really good uh, router, you still need the the bandwidth to be able to push that router, you know. And a lot of routers are also uh, unsecure. There's been re uh, there's been studies on on half the nation, pretty much half the nation's routers are their security of their updates of their firmware is actually uh, easily crackable. I mean. I'm constantly updating my my routers with security holes, patches. I mean, all kinds of things, and that's another same thing with phones. Phones are the same way. There, there are many, pretty much many computers, and I wanted to make it across that a lot of phones nowadays, people don't realize they're not being updated. If you go into settings and look at your phone, it will tell you what security patch your phone is on, and um, some phones haven't been patched in a couple of years. Like a lot of people hold on to their phones for a lot longer, which is understandable. But if you realize you keep all your data, you keep your banks, you keep everything on your device, and you're using an old phone that still has security flaws, you can easily, easily be uh, exploited, hacked. You know, your information can be uh, taken. I mean, there's been a lot of apps that are maliciously can steal your information. Um, but I would say at least a third of the world doesn't even realize that their phone is outdated, if not more. Especially all those cheap throwaway phones that never get updated. Um, I'm a big fan of updates because they they fix things, they patch loopholes, and even CPUs and computers had had. Uh, I don't know if you heard of what uh, Intel had something called meltdown. Uh, there was a flaw inside of a CPU that can exploit your computer. I mean, there's a lot of things, and Intel came out and had to patch that real fast but all yeah, I, this... I just go by the assumption that nothing i nothing i do digitally is secure like it, it well you, you know can... like it well you... you know, cause the, cause the device is not like i, I mean i i yes i use pa i'm not saying i don't use passwords but mm. I, you know it's a it, it's a big padlock on a wooden door that you could kick down if you want yeah. and no no communication no data is more secure than the device it's on. And as long as your Correct. device is connected to the network, Correct. and it's not, that, it's not that Verizon is evil, it's that no. government puts a gun to their head and says, give us the back door or we put you out of business. Well, That's, that's the threat government represents. That, that point right there, what I was going to say right there is, actually the carriers nowadays do not want to give the government information. Even Google has actually stood up to them because... Nowadays, bad PR means uh, people don't want to use your stuff. Yeah, I don't believe uh, that. They're making it look like that. Does the government well, still really not? Do, are, well, look, oh, look, they're look like, at, hey, you know how we used to do this in the open? We're going to do this behind a curtain now. Now it's going to look good. Yeah, but well, the carriers have their own incentives of doing that because they get more customers. PR. PR well, it's PR. Exactly. They want, it's, it's just PR for them. They, all they want is to give their customers false confidence in the security of their network. But what Google has done is taken steps into implementing security and privacy things on your devices now. So like with Android 11, you can actually see everything coming in on your phone. You can see if an app is using your microphone. You can see if an app is using your camera. You can block an app from using your location. You can now, when you run an app, you can now say only use your location in oh, the yeah. app. Hey, yeah, but you know what? You you, can, there's you no can way... You can, you can get pulled it. over by a, hold on there's no way that you can get pulled over by a cop mm -hmm. 
and have him take your phone to his vehicle for a few minutes and know that he wasn't able to pull everything off of it. No, he can't. He had, the cops actually have no no um they would need a lot of the information. Over a thief if your phone gets stolen. Uh, okay, do you remember do you remember uh that shootout that happened with the whole Apple iPhone? That uh, FBI was trying. Yeah, to Yeah, where, where where Apple was saying we're we're trying to defend our customers' privacy. And you guess how what FBI did? They could not get into the to the phone. They actually went to a known hacker that used. There's a, a program called iPonage because I used to okay. jailbreak phone iPhones. iPonage was his hacker. They went to him and made and asked him. They paid him to make a backdoor so they could get into that phone. Apple would refuse to do it because they have their they have their their what do you, their image that they need to portray that they're for the customer. Right. Regardless if we want to say uh, the government's involved or whether or not it's still the action of what they did and they denied the FBI, they denied all those businesses and they said we will not open that. So the FBI had to do something else on their own and they actually went to known, you know, known uh, exploiters in that you know Mac and whatnot to open the phone, and which that's what they did. So, but my point is, is if you look at what they're doing as far as privacy and location and stuff, they're trying to make strides into letting people control their own stuff. Because what happens is, if no one, if everybody sees uh, that they can see your information, they're not going to use your product. Like, do you know? Do you know that uh, company Blue, B L U? They sell cheap nope. phones. Okay, well they're out of Florida, and about th about two and a half years ago, they were caught. The hacker op caught one of their kernels was actually leaking information to China on a secret server. So a lot of people don't know that Apple uh, and Amazon pulled all their phones off of Amazon, and and came out with the statement, and basically Blue was. Bla but throwing on their bluffs, they're blasted, and they're you, they're uh, based out of Florida. A lot of people use them; they're cheap, cheap throwaway, you know, like budget phones. Mm -hmm. Well, right. you know, but what I'm saying is, yeah, privacy and you know, big government and all that. I think a lot of the carriers and a lot of a lot of the co uh, companies are taking uh, taking it themselves, you know, like controlling, letting people control their own privacy because they see it that. The consumer nowadays are not being stupid. Like they're seeing that, you know, that that you know, they can control their own information. They can, you know, if basically they can turn it off, you know what I mean? So um but anyway, let's get back to the uh, ISP throttling. What I yeah, well, I got, I got one more part as a sidebar to get onto the security issue there. That's okay. But uh -huh. I, I, want, I want to ask you, we know it's everything you had to say there was amazing. I, I just I want to get to to one other question that's kind of for my personal conclusion here. Mm. Because I take a uh, simplistic approach to all of this for my own digital security, yeah. which is uh, that I, I take, you know, I, I put the padlocks on the wooden doors for all the petty stuff like in yeah. my bank accounts and my crypto accounts and things like yeah. that. Um, but my basic assumption for security of information is that if I was saying something, um, I would never put anything in digital format that I wasn't willing to have go public yeah because there's, there's no unless it was a message photograph email video uh audio recording nothing and uh you know i would never say something to another human being that i wouldn't stand behind that way and if it was private and i needed to ensure the absolute privacy of it in a way yeah. with peace of mind of knowing that it was impossible i'd say I either have to go analog or do end to end offline encryption yeah, with air gaps. Encryption. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And yeah. for everybody and and the, the purpose for that for me is I don't have to think about it. I don't have to worry about it. You know, don't have anything to hide if you know that hiding is more trouble than it's worth in my case. But I think for everybody it it means that any effort you put into digital security has to be weighed against that ultimate uncertainty of how secure is the device unless you yeah. go to and, and anyway so back to the isps if you, if you if you if you like that well whatever you want to say in response to that well and in, in general as long as your phone is being supported and you get the updates you can actually see when they release patch notes what they're patching what they've fixed 
you know, if there's exploits fixed. But I like I I constantly upgrade my routers. I constantly change. You know, even some routers have built-in VPNs, and you can even see uh, if you go into your router, you can even see by a log by what's you know if anything is phishing for any information or any, anything is you know looking at your stuff or you know you're being uh, DDoSed or whatever the case may be. But the reality of it is, is all is people don't spend enough time looking at those things. They don't really care. They just want it to work. But then when something happens, they say, you know, they, say they say, fuck this device, this is a piece of shit or whatever, you know what I mean? But a lot of times that's because the device isn't being supported. It tends to break or it runs slow or it um I don't know, restarts. I mean there's all kinds of things. But, you know, that, that goes with the, the connection you're on, that goes with the device, that goes with a lot of things. But um, back to the ISPs, uh, nowadays, if you look at your carrier's plans underneath in fine print, it will tell you that how much data you're allowed to use before they throttle you. And most carriers nowadays will throttle you down to about 600 kilobits. Uh, some carriers are worse. Uh, they'll do 2G speeds. Um, the only time you really get uh, like a tablet, which is funny, I think it's funny. Tablets tend to get uh, more. I don't know how would you put it. More prioritization. They'll actually let the tablets go to 1080p. I guess people don't use them as much. I don't know. But now uh, with Verizon's 5G, they'll let you use that unlimited. But their 5G is kind of kind of shitty right now. It's a total different version. What what? Uh, Sprint and T-Mobile are using. Uh, there's like two different versions of 5G. Now these are MM, MM Wave, and then there's uh, what Verizon's using, Ultra Wideband, which it can only go a few blocks. Uh, that's why they have certain sections. It's not really nationwide. Um, but uh, yeah, so if you're using a hotspot or you're using anything like that, um, what's going to happen is after you use your after you use your data, even the uh, highest plan, I think Verizon has 75 gigs. That's your threshold. Once you hit that threshold, if the if the tower isn't congested, what will happen is that prioritization program will let you fly. It will still let you fly to your maximum capabilities, but what happens is if it more and more people connect, more and more use data, you will get basically thrown on the back burner because you've used your threshold. Right. <clears throat> And well, listen, like, excuse me. Hey, Jim, Jim had a question here. He wanted to get in. Yeah, if I could, uh, I, I just like to know because my phone, I got the iPhone 11, and it said when I go into Phoenix, it says at the top 5G LTE. So, and and in certain and, areas, if you go to certain well, areas of Phoenix, it'll go back is, down to 4G is, LTE. That's AT and T, right? Yeah, AT and T. Correct. Okay, that that's a whole. That's another time. Okay, AT and T was. To me, the biggest kind of scammer last year or the year before, 5G, yeah. 5G or LTE or 5G E has an E on the end, correct? Yeah, yeah, something. Like okay, that. that just that all that is is LG LTE Advance. It's just it's LTE. It's 4G. Let, uh, right. let me explain a little bit about this. Okay, back in the day when 2G and 3G were coming about, um, uh, AT and T decided to come out and say 3G was 4G. Okay. There's two different types of networks. There's HSUPA and HSDPA. High speed packet access, high speed upload packet access. And those are pretty much 3G speeds. Now they can get really fast. They can go up to like 100 megabits per second. So what at and decided to come out and say, oh, we got we got uh, 4G, which in reality it's like 3, 3G or you can say 3, 3.5G if you really want to get technical. And now they're doing the same bullshit with 5G. That 5G E is not 5G. It is actually 4G. I don't notice. Any difference yeah, it is. It is really? no different. It is I'm just a little icon on the corner that they decided to change. And Apple went along with it. Now Sprint. Well, hey, Sprint. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt. Hey, we gotta. Man, we gotta be wrapping this up pretty soon. We're way over time. We got people in our audience waiting to get back to uh, to them. Uh, about our, our contests for the, the today's show uh, to wrap this up. Man, uh, I want to talk to you. We're going to keep talking about uh, what we can do for off-grid internet here in northern Arizona. 
But for these bigger problems, I'm glad we have the opportunity today to bring your perspective to our audience. So do you have any final thoughts to wrap up? Um, no, I mean, uh, just I say with you, uh, just whatever your devices are using, make sure you see if when the last time they're updated, I would say uh, if they're still supporting even your routers and your modems, uh, I suggest replacing every few years, get something new, um, at least something with a built-in VPN, you know, to help your security, even your phone. The same thing, make sure that uh, whatever provider that you're using for your phone, make sure that security patch is updated. Um, iPhones are pretty good at uh, uh, updates for Apple, but uh, Apple's kind of another story, maybe for another another day. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's, you know, that's what I want to say. All right. Thanks so much for joining us, brother. We'll be in touch. <laughs>